Welcome everyone. Let's get glowing. My name is Katie Rivera and I'm so thrilled to be your host this evening. We have a fun, informative uh, uh, evening for um, planned. But before uh, we get started, I'm going to tell you my why. I have been involved with impact melanoma for several years. Actually, um, I, going back to when it was the Melanoma Foundation of New England, um, I got involved because melanoma actually runs in my husband's family. Um, his grandmother passed away from melanoma when my mother-in-law was just a young girl. And then many years later, my sister-in-law developed melanoma. And because of early detection, she is now healthy and thriving and living her best life. Uh, but everything that melanoma found uh, that impact melanoma stands for and the mission I wholeheartedly believe in, which is really just providing skin cancer awareness, educating about the importance of early detection and providing support for patients nationwide. So again, thank you for joining us this evening um, for this new Let's Get Going event, Get Glowing event. We're thrilled to have you with us. We're excited to share ways to keep your skin healthy, glowing, and sun safe. Um, throughout the evening, if you have any questions, type the questions into the chat box and we'll have a Q&A session at the end with our skin experts. Um, also, we're going to be doing a drawing for everyone that's on this call uh, for a wonderful skincare product giveaway. And then also you should have received li a link to view our auction items for this evening. We have some terrific uh, skincare products that are on there. We have UPF clothing, there's a wine tasting, and so much more. So be sure to click on the link uh, that you received on your phones to view these awesome auction items so you can bid on them. And a special thanks to all of our auction donors as well. And the auction is going to be closing tomorrow at noon. So get on there and start bidding. Um, so right now we're going to um, grab, let's grab our drinks for a toast. Uh, you should have received the um, Get Glowing Skin Smoothie. Um, right recipe. Um, and there's just a ton of ingredients and nutrients that are um, perfect for glowing skin. And I'm going to invite our panelists uh, to unmute for a toast. Cheers. Hi, ladies. Hi. Yeah. How you doing? Thank you for, for joining. All right. So before we begin, let's cheers to great health, healthy, glowing skin and uh, reduction of skin cancer nationwide. Wide. Cheers. Yeah. Delicious, exactly what I needed. Um, all right, now I'm happy to introduce a dermatologist and member of Impact Melanoma's Medical Advisory Board, Dr. Brooke Sakura of Skincare Physicians. Uh, she's gonna share best practices for preventing skin cancer and its deadliest form, melanoma. Over to you, Brooke. Perfect. Sorry, I was just clicking on how to unmute myself. I'm not very Zoom good. <laughs> um, but thank you, Katie. Uh, that sure looks like a tasty drink. I settled for a Yum. glass yes. of wine that gives you a glow too. So, uh, but hello everyone. Um, I am Brooke Sakura. I'm a dermatologist at Skincare Physicians in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Um, I know we have people signing in from many different states, which is awesome and so exciting. Um, as Katie said, I'm also a member of Impact Melanoma's Medical Advisory Board, and I just wanted to say welcome to tonight's event. We are so happy and glad that you're here to join us, and we really appreciate your support. Um, I know at this point in the pandemic, many of us are Zoomed out, um, so thank you, thank you for taking your time, making donations. It's, it's greatly appreciated. So, um, In my section, I'm going to talk a little bit about general skin health and melanoma, um, and the importance of some safe sun practices. Um, and I, you probably saw as you were coming into the Zoom room, some of those statistics that um, Impact Melanoma was sharing, uh, but I just think they're so powerful. So I wanted to bring them up again, but I don't know if you knew or all of us knew, but melanoma is the second most common form of cancer in teens and young adults between the ages of 15 and 29. So this is a cancer that not only affects older people, but affects very young patients as well. And what's shocking is that this number is still so high, despite the fact that we know the major cause of melanoma is UV light or sunlight. Um, so we know the major cause of melanoma, yet this, you know, the rates of melanoma are still so high. Um, if you have five or more sunburns in your lifetime, that more than doubles your risk of melanoma. 
So think about that. Five or more sunburns and you've already doubled your risk of melanoma. And tanning bed usage before the age of 35 will increase your risk of melanoma by nearly 60%. So if anyone on this phone call uses a tanning bed or anyone has children or teenage children or college age kids that use tanning beds or has a friend that uses a tanning bed, you have to talk to them about not using commercial tanning beds. You could save their life. So that is a very important message and a very important statistic to share with people. 60% increase. And that number goes up with regular tanning bed usage. And sadly, more than two people in the US will die of melanoma every hour. So while we're on this call this evening, you know, during this hour, two people will die of this deadly form of cancer. But there is hope. This isn't all doom and gloom, and this is optimistic, and there is hope, and this is why we are here tonight. Um, and this is why you are all supporting the wonderful work of Impact Melanoma and what we're doing. So when caught early, melanoma is 99% curable. So this is a cancer that we can cure. Not only do we know how to help prevent it, we know how to cure it if it's caught early. So this is why we stress the importance of regular skin examinations. I'm a dermatologist. I will give you your, my plug here. Please come visit me if you're my patient or please come visit your dermatologist if you have a dermatologist. And if you don't, please get one. We all need to have regular skin examinations, head to toe thorough examination. If you find something concerning on your skin, do not wait, have the spot evaluated, go and have it checked. Don't think it's nothing. Any little thing, any tiny little, new little mark could be a melanoma that's growing under the skin. Do skin, you know, self-skin exams, get to know your body, look at your moles um, and check your partner's backs. Have your partner look at your back. You can't see your back. So make sure that you're checking them. If you see anything, send them in. And then importantly, we all know this, but we can't stress it enough. When you're outdoors, you need to wear sun protection. You need to wear sunscreen. You know, we recommend an SPF of at least 30 or higher and regularly applying the sunscreen. So at least every two hours, reapplying the sunscreen. You know, wear a wide brim hat. Wear something that's gonna protect your face and protect your ears. Wear sunglasses to protect your eyes and the skin around your eyes. You know, if you're not good about applying sunscreen and you don't like to apply sunscreen, then wear, as you know, Katie mentioned earlier, wear UPF clothing or ultraviolet protection factor clothing. This is clothing that has ultraviolet protection already built into it. You know, companies like Sulumbra, Coolabar make this clothing. Um, and seek shade in the middle of the day. You know, when the rays are the most extreme, don't go running, don't go play tennis. You know, do this in the early morning or do this later, later in the day. Um, you know, as we said, and we will reiterate over and over tonight, UV light is the main risk factor for the development of melanoma. But it's also the main cause of extrinsic skin aging. And who wants to look old? No one. So not only will safe sun practices save your life, but they're also gonna to lead to fewer wrinkles and fewer brown spots and give you a better overall glow. And who doesn't want that? So, um, you know, I, I thought about you know, bringing this topic up because I get asked a lot about it in clinic, but for those that don't want to expose their skin to the damaging rays of the sun, but still want to have this sun kiss glow. You know, I talk to my patients a lot about this, but you should consider sunless tanning products. You know, so the CDC and the American Academy of Dermatology have both determined these to be safer alternatives to sun, you know, and ultraviolet radiation. So these sunless tanning products, we know these are these lotions, the creams, the sprays, the foams, the towelettes. I mean, they come in every version. Um, these professional spray tans, all of these things that can give glow to your skin you know, bronzers, they can give glow to your skin without the damage that comes with UV radiation. So if you have a young teenage child, let them know, have them get a spray tan, tell them these are safe alternatives to ultraviolet radiation. Now the active ingredient that's in most of these products is something called dihydroxyacetone or DHA. And what happens when this is applied to the top layer of the skin is it darkens that top layer of the skin temporarily. You know, so you may have a tan or look a little bit darker for a few days, you know, to even a week. Um, you know, there are also other more natural self-tanning products that will contain things like beet juice that you can use. But I've had patients ask me this and I just wanted to bring it up. I don't know if it's common or people think this, but you know, I've had patients ask me about these sunless tanning pills. So taking a pill by mouth, if that can make you tanner. Um, believe it or not, they exist on the market, but they are very, very dangerous. So please do not do that. Um, they actually contain a chemical that's quite strong, and this chemical can turn you orange, um, it can cause liver damage, it can impair your vision, um, so there's no such thing as a safe tanning pill to take. 
um, you know, dihydroxyacetone or DHA has been approved, but it's only approved for external application. So it should not be inhaled. So if you go to a commercial tanning bed center um, where you're getting these spray tans, um, make sure that there's proper ventilation in the tanning booths. You know, make sure that your eyes, your mouth, and your, your nose are protected. Um, exfoliate your skin before you go. That way you can get a better overall tan. Um, if you're doing it at home, you know, which I like to do, I use it on my legs, apply it to one section at a time so you get a more even application. Um, wipe the areas over your joints or you know, even apply a barrier cream beforehand so that those areas of thicker skin um, don't get darker. Um, and give yourself time to dry, you know, lock that door, keep the kids out, stay in there a good 10 minutes, let yourself dry, um, and then put your clothes on. But there are, you know, this is, this is what I argue with my patients every day. And there are people that are definitely addicted to the sun and they want to have that, that tan and that glow. And I tell them there are safe alternatives. And, you know, I'm happy to talk about this, this with my patients if they want that, um, but there are definitely safe alternatives. Um, so that's it for me for now. You know, I really wanted to highlight the prevalence of melanoma talk about how we can protect ourselves, the importance of sun protection, give a plug for everyone on this call to have a regular skin examination done, do self skin examinations at home. Um, I did wanna briefly talk about safe alternatives to UV light as this is a question I frequently get asked. I want that glow, what can I do? Um, so, you know, the, these are safe alternatives. Um, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Katie and her team. We're gonna talk a little bit more about skincare routines, um, discuss the, you know, the important work that Impact Melanoma is doing um, at the end of this call, we're also going to uh, field questions. So if you have questions about skin health, skincare routines, um, anti-aging treatments, anything like that, feel free, as Katie said, to put those in the chat box. We're happy to address all your questions. Um, also, I would encourage everyone to check out the online auction item. Um, there are lots of items and wonderful items in there. Um, my practice, Skincare Physicians, we've donated an auction item, which is a complimentary um, cosmetic consult with me. Um, and a free Botox treatment. So I would love to meet the lucky winner. I look forward to seeing you. We can talk further about any questions or any concerns that you may have. Um, but again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for everyone uh, that's tuned in from all over the country tonight. Um, I know we're all kind of zoomed out at this point, but we really, really greatly appreciate your support um, and you taking the time to join us. So um, with that, I'll turn it back to Katie. Excellent. Thank you so much, Brooke. That was very informative and just such great information. I always make sure that I get my annual skin check every year and I protect my skin uh, from the sun all year round. Um, so if you have any questions for Dr. Brooke Sakura, please put them in the chat section right now so we can answer those in a little bit. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to introduce you to my friend and fellow skincare expert, Jessica Fitzmorris. She is the founder of Aesthetics Exchange Skincare and has over 18 years of, of uh, experience and knowledge with, uh, with skincare. And she's going to provide her easy daily product routine for a sunless and safe, healthy glow. Thank you, Katie. Good evening, everybody. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. Like Katie said, I've been in aesthetics for 18 years. I've worked with dermatologists and plastic surgeons and skin is my life. It is my true passion. It is what I was put on this earth to do. <laughs> and I am excited to show you a video of five easy steps you can do to have glowing, healthy skin, literally at any age. These are the steps for, you know, a teenager to somebody in their nineties. Um, doing these five easy steps will give you healthy skin. And that's always my ultimate goal. And if you have healthy skin, you and thus will also look a little bit better and a little bit younger. So our goal is always healthy skin. And we can play the video. Hi, I'm Jessica Fitzmorris, licensed esthetician for 18 years. And I am here to show you how to have healthy, glowing skin at any age. Your skin is the largest organ in your body. So you should be exercising it and working it out just like you work out your booty. Here are our steps. Cleanse, exfoliate, nourish, moisturize, protect. Are you ready to demo our skin workout? First step, cleanse. When choosing a cleanser, I like a gel cleanser. It helps take off my makeup and it makes my skin feel nice and clean. 
if you are a teenager, you're always gonna wanna go for a gel because it's gonna help to break up any excess oil on the skin and it's gonna make you feel nice and clean. If you feel like your skin's more sensitive or dry, you're gonna choose a creamier cleanser. So once you have all of your cleanser on your face, I like to use a little Viva sponge. Any kind of facial sponge will do. This will help to give you a little bit extra exfoliation during the cleansing process and making sure that you really get into those pores to get them nice and clean. And I'm never against a double cleanse. A good towel off. Make your make sure your skin's dry before you go on to your next step. You don't want any water to get in the way of any of your product penetration. Two most important things in skincare, exfoliation and protection. If you're not doing these two steps, all the other steps don't matter. Exfoliating, a few different things you can do for this. But the most important part is that you're using something with a glycolic or a lactic acid, these are AHAs, and there's also exfoliators with salicylic acid, which is a BHA. Now, they both do two different things. An AHA will topically exfoliate the skin, while a BHA will get into the pore and clean it out, kind of like a scrubbing bubbles. So you want to find these ingredients in a serum or a moisturizer that you put on your skin and you leave it on. They'll eat away all the dead skin all throughout the day or the night, whenever you choose to put that on, and you're gonna have super smooth skin the next day. So I'm gonna put on my exfoliator cream. You only need a small amount. When putting on product, mix it in your fingers, do cheek, chin, nose, forehead, spread it in, and don't double dip. Your other exfoliators that you've heard about are like scrubs, um, something that has some grit to it. Those aren't actually gonna give you a nice uh, deep exfoliation for your skin. It's more like a little polish and those are great to do in the shower, in the morning, um, something to kind of just get off any little excess dead skin before you're gonna put your makeup on for the day. But to have a real good exfoliator for clean skin, make sure it's in a serum or a cream form. Next, we're nourishing. One of my favorite steps. Usually a nourishing product is gonna be in a serum form where it's a really small molecule that can penetrate deep into the skin. You wanna look for products that have stem cells, peptides, vitamins, there's vitamin C, there's vitamin B, all kinds of different serums that are gonna to help to nourish and feed your skin. Next up, moisturize. Moisturizer is important, but if you're not exfoliating, it's not gonna do anything. So remember, exfoliating number one but moisturizers you can look for all kinds of great ingredients um ceramides and growth factors hyaluronic acid is in most moisturizers and you just want to have something that's going to make you feel nice and dewy don't forget your eye cream you should start your eye cream at 20. and last most important next to exfoliating is protection. And this is for glowing skin. Of course, sunblock is really the most important thing to have healthy skin. We wanna keep it away from the sun, making sure you know that to use a physical protectant when you're at the beach or at the pool, um, something that's a little bit more occlusive to help reflect the sun um, when you're in direct sunlight. And then for your everyday, using a sunscreen is a little bit more comfortable under makeup. Lip balms with SPF are always a do, especially even when you're just taking a walk with a dog or just taking a walk. Making sure you protect your lips is really important. Not only are you going to be putting on your sunblock, put on some shades, throw on a hat, and then you are ready to go. Make sure you protect your skin at all costs. Now you're really, mm -hmm. really protected. Speaking of masks, a little bit of mask me has been happening this year. Things you can do. Make sure that your mask is always clean and fresh. If you work out with your mask, obviously don't put it on again. 
if you have makeup on underneath your mask, make sure you wash it. Um, I prefer not to wear makeup under my mask whenever possible because you really need your skin to breathe. And if you're finding that you're getting little rashes in the areas where your mask sits right in through here, you can put a little barrier cream there that can help with the friction to keep your skin glowing. You need to protect it. In five easy steps, you can have glowing, healthy skin. Thank you from Aesthetics Exchange and love the skin you're in. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jess. That was a great routine. And as always, your skin looks so amazing. Uh, be sure to get your questions in. I see questions coming in already, but uh, if you'd like to get your questions in uh, for Jessica, uh, we'll get those answered uh, at the end during the Q&A. And if you'd like to rewatch Jessica's video, you can visit Impact Melanoma's YouTube channel as well. Um, there's, I just checked and it looks like the bidding is well underway, which is awesome. Uh, we've got many great items and one that I wanna highlight is the sunscreen dispenser that you can win for your community, which is so awesome. And I hope that there's someone from my town on uh, going to win. Um, now I'd like to introduce Jamie Wood, who is the senior, senior business, I can't even check it out. Sorry. This, um, Jamie Wood, who is um, a rep with SkinCeuticals, and Corey Jennison, who is the owner of Skin Health Spa. And they're going to share with us how a serum like Dose provides skin brightening and radiance. Over to you both. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Corey Jennison, and I am an 18 year esthetician as well as part owner of Skin Health Betty Spa here in Dover, New Hampshire. Hi, and I'm Jamie Wood, and I'm the Senior Business Development Manager for SkinCeuticals for the Northeast. And today, Corey and I are here to introduce a very exciting new device um, by SkinCeuticals. And this device is, a, it develops a customized serum to meet your needs as far as your skin concerns, ranging anywhere from anti-aging to acne to pigmentation concerns. And we're going to walk through a questionnaire um, that is guided by anything that we've had for history in the past, whether it's allergies or concerns we have in general, and it will come out at the end. You'll have a personalized serum just for you. So we've already put Jamie into the system, and I'm going to walk through a guided questionnaire that's going to help pick the exact mix that's going to work for her skin concerns. So Jamie, what is your biggest concern when you're talking about pigmentation? Would it be like dullness and unevenness? Are you concerned about any old acne scarring, UVH spots or brown patches? I'd say dullness. The next question would be, are you blemish prone? No. Do you have wrinkle concerns? Absolutely. <laughs> And for your concerns, would you rate them one, two, or three, mild, moderate, or pretty severe? I would say moderate. Are you currently using a retinol now? I am. Do you want this to be, so we have two options also with doses. You can have an AM dose and you can have a PM dose. We always wanna use our retinols at night. Are you wanting this to be, or can be able to use your retinol in there and use it at night, or you wanna use a daytime serum? I think I would like to use it at night. Okay, so now your primary concern overall, is it pigmentation, lines and texture, or clarity? Lines and texture. Would you say you have normal, dry, or combination skin? Combination. So it has magically mixed her perfect serum for her. Everything is weighted and calibrated, so all the serums are put at the exact dosage. I'm going to talk about. So now you're going to actually watch the ingredients. It's going to mix everything on its perfect weight. Just going to move it in. Oh, yeah. So we're going to move it in a little bit so you guys can see how it's mixed. So the, the four ingredients that were chosen based on the questionnaire are all going to individually um, fill the bottle. And then at the end, we'll show how it's all mixed and calibrated together to form the final formulation. Very cool. 
right? So there's two different choices too. There's two different mixing mediums. The first ingredient that's going to go in there, there's one based if you're a little bit, have a little bit more oily skin, so it has no oils in it. And then there's a creamier base and that's always mixed when we put a retinol in just to give a little buffer to the skin. So you'll see that's the largest amount of product that goes in is the first base. Yeah. Hopefully you guys are able to see what it's doing from here, but as Corey just described, this is the base of the ingredient that's going to fill up. And then as each one completes, it'll circle around and find the next ingredient that is to be put into the serum. What's really nice, they've did they're as they're expanding, they're adding new serums to um, treat different conditions. Azelaic acid was just the newest one that was added, which is great because it really helps deal with more blemish prone skin. We have brighteners in there. Um, then there's for clarity, all of the questions that I went through. So you can pick kind of what is your most your major concern for your skin. And then you can also have an AM and a PM. So for those with a, using a retinol, it just kind of puts all your steps um, together. So you're not having to layer three or four different products to get that result that you want, right? All that magic is in one bottle. And the great thing about it is too, is that it either can highlight some other skincare products that you're already using, such as antioxidants, sunscreens, of course. Um, but I know for a lot of people out there as well, want a more of a simple routine, especially some of the men probably in the audience. So having one, um, one, one product done. is one and done <laughs> is a great way to do it, but it can also enhance your current routine. So it can be used in, in multiple ways. So now we're on to our third out of our four ingredients. Do you want to talk? So um, as Corey and I were saying, um, we're, we're here live at Skin Health Mini Spa in Dover, New Hampshire, where clearly they have the custom dose, but also um, Dr. Sakura, who was speaking earlier tonight, they do have a custom dose at Skincare Physicians in Chestnut Hill. So if you're interested in learning more about um, the device or the ingredients involved, please um, visit either of the websites or come in in person. We'd be happy to help you with that. We're going to get to the exciting part too, yes. where we compound it, where yes. it spins. <laughs> Almost there. One more ingredient. Yep, final ingredient. I don't know if you can hear it at all and how hard it's working to make that perfect dose for you. <laughs> This is when it was in Time Magazine, right? Yep. Yeah, it was in Time Magazine for 2019 as one of the greatest inventions of the year. So in skincare, we, we love um, SkinCeuticals is often a new beauty and some of the other, you know, fashionable or beauty magazines out there. But um, this was the first time we'd actually been in a publication such as Time. So very exciting for us. So now Corey's going to place it in the top here in the centrifuge. And this is where it's going to compound it or mix it um, to all the ingredients together. I can't see the button. Now, I don't know if you can see sure, yeah, it no. spinning in there. It might be too bright. Can anyone see the wheel in there? There you go. Yeah. Yep. This one is showing up yeah. first. So you're going to see it's really nice. It makes, even though you might see it backwards, <laughs> it's customized. It has where you received the dose. It has when it expires. It has your name on it. And on the bottle, it will also have um, the ingredients on the other back label. Um, so everything is sealed and ready to roll. You'll also get an email reminder to, because right, you can have the best products for yourself, but if you don't use them, they don't work. Very true. <laughs>
and it has the instructions on here as well. So people, when they get home and, you know, whether it's going to be an AM or a PM, like we discussed, it'll go ahead and have all that information and all the information is stored within the iPad as well, or the tablet as well. So if people come back and they don't remember their formulations are able to go through what they had before. You can either tweak it to have it be a little bit different uh, moving forward or keep it the same, depending on, on how it was working for their skin, or maybe it's seasonal change. So here's the label. It has Jamie's beautiful name right on it. It's beautiful on the bottle. Pressure of the camera and putting it on her. Yes. <laughs> there you go, Jamie. There's your dose. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, we'll look forward to seeing you at either of the locations to learn more about it. We hope you also enjoy your gifts for the first hundred yes. people that SkinCeutical gave in the tins. A nice little skincare regime for you to try. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Jamie and Corey, for sharing that. I totally want that. That seems like a really, really cool product. And I love that it's customized to your skin concern and skin type. Um, how many different skincare products could that, that product make, that the dose make? There's many. Oh. I agree. Yeah. It's about a, over 100 different formulations with the new addition of the ingredient for acne. So there's several different options that we can do now, which is very exciting. Oh, it is. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, last but not least, I want to, uh, let's see, I want to um, introduce your, uh, to you, um, Impact Melanoma's Executive Director, Deb Gerard, uh, to say a few words. Deb. Thank you, Katie. Um, what a fun night. We're really excited to have you all with us tonight. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Deb Gerard, the Executive Director of Impact Melanoma. And I thought I'd just like to spend a couple of minutes talking about the specific work we do here at the foundation. And first though, I'd like to start with some thank yous. First for our awesome host, Katie Rivera, and our panelists, Dr. Sakura, Jessica Fitzmorris, Jamie Wood, and Corey Jennison. To our sponsors, um, Mott 50, um, a really wonderful UPF skin uh, uh, protective, sun protective clothing company, um, as well as Starburst Graphics and Printing and Youth Inc. I'd also like to give a shout out to all of the donors who gave such wonderful presents in our gift packs for our first hundred uh, first hundred people. Those were, those were fabulous. And um, what a gift. Our, uh, we're really clear that uh, you'll be sun safe all summer. To our auction donors for their amazing offerings and all of you for supporting us today. Thank you so much. We're really grateful for your support. I have just a couple of thoughts I'd like to share. I'd like you all to think about when you had your last skin cancer screening from your healthcare provider. I'm sure for many of you, it was prior to the pandemic. Now it's time to get back on track, especially if you're at high risk for skin cancer and melanoma. If you've never had a screening, this would be a great time to call and book one. We like to say an ounce of prevention could save your life. Healthcare providers are ready to see you and they have wonderful COVID safe protocols in place. So don't wait, make that phone call. Um, they're waiting to hear from you. May is uh, coming upon us and it is Melanoma Awareness Month. And we need you to help us spread the word about the importance of UV safety. You've heard from our presenters tonight about the hows and whys of skin cancer prevention Put these to good use and share them with your friends and family. 
Join us on Facebook Live each Wednesday during the month of May at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time for some interesting and useful presentations. Would you like to better understand why sun protective clothing is so important? Or maybe learn more about skin cancer prevention for your whole family? Maybe you'd like to hear about the launch of our newest, coolest program, No Sun for Babies. Let's start educating parents from the very beginning to help them set up good sun protective behavior for their families from the very beginning. These are just a few topics we'll be addressing. Finally, I'd like to offer you an opportunity to help us meet our mission of reducing the risk of skin cancer and melanoma everywhere. Help us help others never have to hear the words, you have melanoma. Help us help families never have to lose a loved one from this disease or go through grueling treatment to keep the disease at bay. Your gift to impact will help us make this happen. You can donate on the link right here. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Check out our website to see all of the really great programs and events coming up. So thank you. Now back to you, Katie. Awesome, thank you so much, Deb. Uh, just one more reminder that our auction items will be closed tomorrow at noon. And now we're gonna announce the winner for the skincare product drawing. All right, congratulations, Jordan Duncan. You just won some fabulous skincare products. And if you're on the call still, uh, put yes on the chat box. Let's see. We'll give Jordan a minute. Let's see. All right, maybe we'll start our, our um, questions and answers. Oh, let's see. Answer live. All right. Let's do our Q and A. Let's see, looks like we've got a lot of questions that have been coming in. Let's see, um, how often should we be exfoliating? What should be an everyday? Um, should it be an everyday thing? So I, it depends on what you're using to exfoliate with. Um, so what I was recommending in my video was a AHA BHA cream, and that's something that you could do every single day or you could do every other day. Um, and I saw that somebody had questions about retinol. If you were to be using retinol, then you wouldn't be using the AHAs or BHAs. The retinol would be your exfoliator. Um, for most people, you really should be doing it daily. Um, it's just finding the right product for you that's not too strong, that's going to irritate your skin. So it's very, very low percentages of those AHAs and BHAs that just kind of take the surface off to make sure that you have glowing skin in the morning. Nothing too um, intense. Awesome. All right, the next question is, if we use a topical retinoid prescribed by a dermatologist, dermatologist, uh, when should we apply these in a skincare steps? Thanks. So I answered that in the chat box. We did. I, um, I'll answer it live too, because not many people are checking it probably, but um, <laughs> Prescription should always go first. So after the wonderful steps that we talked about, the cleansing, the exfoliating, the first things that should go on your skin are your prescription medications, whether it's a, a medicine for rosacea or it's a prescribed tretinoin or retin-A, um, those should go on first. Um, so prescription should always be the first thing that you put on. Awesome. All right, recommendations for a BHA. So salic, um, salicylic acid would be your BHA. Um, if you're acne prone, then you might have a product that just has BHAs, but for everybody's use, you should have a low dose of both AHAs and BHAs to get your skin clean from within inside the pore as well as topically on the skin. 
There's so many product lines out there. I always just recommend going with a professional line because we have higher percentages of active ingredients with less um, preservatives in them. And you wanna be seeing a professional that's actually recommending these products for you. So try not to order things just online, try to see a professional and get those recommendations for your particular skin. Awesome. Next question, is there a product line that you recommend? Of course, we all have our favorite one. So I, like I said, go to your person, your professional, whether it's a dermatologist or an esthetician, your skin expert, and they can recommend the things that they recommend, you know, think that is perfect for your skin. Everybody has their own favorites. And Jamie and Corey, you may want to use multiple different product lines. I mean, mm -hmm. it's sure. a matter of finding what sure. works for your skin and, you know, meeting with your, your skincare professional will help you kind of pick that out and you can customize. You don't have to use only one line. Patients ask me that all the time. Like if I, do I have to use just SkinCeuticals or just SkinMedica or just Dermalogica? Like you don't, you should pick and choose products that work for you and, and products that are best for your skin. I think the biggest thing is a professional line and having a professional um, know, because if you're mixing yourself, you could be mixing a lot of ingredients that might be over agitating your skin. So really working with a professional to know that you're not using too many ingredients that are anti-aging and actually, you know, making your skin always having to try to heal itself. Yeah, awesome. Um, how often uh, should I use a dermal roller? Um, I'm not a huge dermal roller fan, so I don't know if anybody else is. All right. All the professionals are on the same page. So throw it out <laughs> and go see a professional for real microneedling. All right. Great answer. All right. Are tinted sunscreens better or worse for the skin acceptance and or effectiveness? So I made it a plug for that in the thing, because there is one difference. So that, you know, the role that visible light plays in sun damage, especially in melasma and some other sun conditions. And so if you're using a tinted sunscreen, it contains, often contains an ingredient called iron oxide. Um, and iron oxide is a good protectant from visible screens. So even when we're looking here at our screens right now, we're getting visible light on our skin. So I am a fan of, of tinted sunscreens. I do think they help. Again, you want to find the right sunscreen for you. And most importantly is that you use a sunscreen, whether it's a chemical sunscreen, a mineral sunscreen, a tinted and non-tinted, you know, find something that you like that you will incorporate into your everyday routine. I mean, you should be wearing sunscreen at least on your face and neck and your hands every day, you know, and of course, when you're outside protecting the rest of your body. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is a good type of facial to get for regular maintenance? My favorite would be, um, like a microdermabrasion facial um, because you want to get a good amount of exfoliation in the treatment. Um, and typically our, you know, a basic facial, we're not doing as much. So a microdermabrasion is good for pretty much everybody because we can be as aggressive or as conservative as we want with the treatment. And we, again, going to a professional, you can customize seasonally. Your skin can be going through different um, things and have different needs. Hydrofacials are amazing. They're kind of a mix of different by infusing certain ingredients and getting the same benefits of like a microderm, dermaplaning with the peel. There are many options. It kind of depends on the level of where your skin is at and the needs at that time. Okay, um, exfoliating, should it be done in the shower? It can be, um, but it's more of a polish. If it's something that's put on and taken off quickly, it's not gonna be your like daily. It might be just like, oh, I need a little pick me up. I need my makeup to go on a little smoother. I have some flakes here or there. It's like your fun in the shower um, exfoliator, but maybe not your only exfoliator. Because it comes okay. And if you don't have it on for a minute or two, you're, it's not going to be on there long enough to actually activate and do anything. Awesome. So you're getting more like if you're looking for mechanical exfoliation, you know, you could use the powders in the shower, you could even use a washcloth, the brushes, you know, the, the, you know, the clarisonic brushes I and mean, anything like that is more shower based like they're saying. Anything that's going to take out an effect has to be on longer. So it's not always ideal for showers, but mechanical exfoli exfoliation works too. So that's certainly an option. Okay, great. Uh, when should someone start using wrinkle creams? 
today. Right. <laughs> yesterday, right yesterday if yeah. you haven't already. <laughs> All right. Let's I mean, see. they should be. I mean, the best wrinkle cream and in the market is sunscreen. I'm block. Yeah, that should be from the the moment you're born. You should be protecting our babies from the. You know, keeping them out of the sun. So by yes, the time you see your wrinkle, it's too late. You want to prevent. <laughs> exactly. Uh, one of my primary concerns with any product I use on myself and my family is all the chemicals they contain. Is there any good clean sunscreen product line you can recommend? So mineral based, you know, so if people are concerned and, you know, a lot of patients are worried and as they should be, I mean, there's a lot of chemicals in a lot of these products. And so the safest thing to say is to use a mineral based sunscreen and there are call them dry wonderful sunscreen. brands. Yeah. They call them just a dry sunscreen. It might look like a powdered makeup, but they can have them tinted or non-tinted as well. They have like a translucent kind of color. We happen just to carry Jane Iredale. It's from I was going to say, I have the same one, the Jane Iredale. Your bag. And when you're at the beach and you're sweaty and gross, you can kind of put it on and it actually um, kind of works a, a little bit quicker as well than a, um, a chemical ingredient. Awesome. Remember with chemical sunscreens, you know, they are applied, but then they take 20 minutes to work. So you can't apply it. I mean, for 20 minutes, you're not protected. It's different than a mineral, be it a powder, be it a mineral sunscreen. Those work immediately, but a chemical sunscreen actually doesn't take effect for a good 20 minutes after you apply it. So remember that when you're, you know, when you're out. Awesome. Uh, such great, um, such great advice. I think we got one more last question and how long is it, uh, how long does the dose last? So if you use it all the time, again, it just depends on whether you, again, the products use best if you use them a certain percent, but about six months. Okay, let's see. Yeah, just make sure we got all the questions. Um, there, is there a specific reasonably priced serum brand you recommend? I would say again, <laughs> go see your professional that's in your area. Um, because we all have our own favorite and there are so many great professional lines out there that have great ingredients um, that will be great for, for everybody. You have to see your professional. And for an antioxidant, if you're only paying a really small amount, then it probably isn't getting where you want it to go. I mean, there is something to say about some ingredients that they say they have some things in there, but if they don't have a carrier to get the products where they wanna go and they're just sitting on the surface of your skin, then it's not doing its due diligence. Okay, here's a question on facial serums with CBD in it. Um, is it true that it helps calm skin redness? It can help with some inflammation, but I, I think it's a little bit of a skin fad. Um, I don't know how you guys feel, but CBD is just big right now. And every year there's going to be a big ingredient, but stay to the ones that are tried and true um, that we know are effective. Um, so growth factors, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin B, antioxidants. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how should we treat the skin on the rest of our body? Pretty much the same. <laughs> exfoliate, get a really good buff and get, get exfoliating on your skin. Make sure you make, um, use your lotion every single day, at least once a day after the shower <laughs> and put it. sunblock on. Uh, yeah, and put sunblock on. So those three steps really for the full body. Mm -hmm. um, here is a question about hyaluronic acid serums. Which step in my skincare routine is best to use a hyaluronic acid ser serum? Typically, it's going to be that nourish phase. If you've exfoliated, then it's going to be your third step. Um, but depending on what you're exfoliating with, it could be your second step. So it really depends on what your um, system is that you're using. A lot of times you go by weight, the heavier products go on later. I always like the concept that, you know, you always cleanse or exfoliate first. Um, you know, we talked about like serums. So as a rough rule, you could think of serum second. So using a vitamin C or vitamin C serum second, hydration after that, and then sunscreen. So sunscreen should be that top layer in the morning. Because once you put on a sunscreen, not many other products or actives will get through that. Hey, sunscreen should coat. Um, can the panelists share what specific sunscreen products they are liking or using at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's fine to mention a few brands. So, I mean, okay. I'm a big SkinCeuticals and La Roche-Posay fan. Um, 
I do, I had a question in the chat box that I'm posting to everyone about the, the ISDIN line, the ISDIN line. I do like that. It's a sunscreen line that combines DNA repair enzymes with sunscreen. Um, I think Elastin has a very nice mineral sunscreen. Um, L to MD makes a wonderful sunscreen. Um, my patients love Super Goop. I mean, Super Goop and White Elephant are very popular right now, and I think they're perfectly fine. I mean, I think they're wonderful sunscreens. Um, I, um, I love, and I've been using for... 17 years. Uh, Jan Marini. I love Jan Marini skin research. Um, and so I love her sunblock. She has a physical and a sunscreen. Um, one has a tint and one doesn't. And so that's what I love. We love SkinCeuticals. We love Elta. We sell a lot of the Elta. They have a lot of different options for different skin types. And obviously we like the Jane for a pure physical dry sunscreen. I have to agree with Dr. Sephora. Obviously, SkinCeuticals, I'm sure you all knew I would answer that. But <laughs> I also do use La Roche-Posay's Anthelios, and that is, I've used that for over almost 12 years now. Um, and I use it on my son as well. So I have to agree, those are my two cho top choices. Awesome. All right, another question. Is there any type of product that removes necklines or jowl lines? No, you need remember. to remember a professional for treatment and try to be preventative. <laughs> And anything that you're putting on your face, you know, it's, it's like we said earlier, don't neglect your neck, you know, so face, oh. neck, hands. <laughs> the skin suit is for a <laughs> neck product as well. They have if a, if the neck wrinkles, repair. Yeah. Which it will help, right? But if the wrinkles are already there, it's important for people to know not to spend your money just on products because product alone is never going to get rid of a wrinkle. That's a hundred percent never going to happen. You have to treat the actual skin. All right, how about women who are attempting to become pregnant or are pregnant? There's not much you can use. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell patients that are pregnant, vitamin C, sunscreen, because you know a lot of pregnant patients have pigmentation issues with melasma. So um, you really need to care for your skin. So lots of vitamin C, lots of sunscreen, absolutely no retinols, um, no prescription retinoids. Um, there are many prescription medications for acne that you should talk to your dermatologist or provider about that you can't use when pregnant. Um, and salicylic acid is a derivative of the same class as aspirin. So patients should not be using salicylic acid when they're pregnant. Okay, um, where is a good place to start teenagers? Where is a good place? Um, I'm guessing they're wondering like what products to put teenagers on. So I like to start with, um, the little via buff sponge that I had in my video, just that and a cleanser is good to start them with if they're just starting to see little bumps on their skin. So something that's really easy that they can do. Um, and then if they're actually starting to get some breakout, then I would actually book them for a facial somewhere for a teen facial. So we can kind of take a look and see what would be the best product for them. We're just getting them on a good cleansing and a little exfoliating. And of course, sunblock routine is like the best first step. And the makeup they're wearing. Know what the makeup they're wearing. Yep. Awesome. All right. What are your thoughts on a gentle cleanser like a set of fill? They're great, especially if you have patients that have sensitive skin. Um, you know, I sometimes tell my patients, you know, if money were an option, you could buy the top line of everything, but you kind of have to know which ingredients and which products are harder to formulate. So things like vitamin C are difficult to formulate. So if you're going to spend more money, spend it on the vitamin C, and then you can buy a less expensive cleanser. But I think it's a wonderful line. It's been around for a long time. Awesome. All right. This looks like the last question. And I think, Brooke, you already answered it in the, um, in the chat section, but I'll just read it. Um, what are your tips on how to keep track of when you should reapply your sunscreen during the day and knowing when it's best? Oh, I just said that part. Um, so it's basically asking when you should reapply your sunscreen during the day. So what I just said in the chat box, and we can have everyone weigh in, was that sunscreens will break down faster when you're outdoors. So when you're in the UV light with wind, um, sunscreens are breaking down faster. So when you're at the beach, you really have to be diligent. I mean, every one to two hours, you need to be reapplying at least. Um, when you're inside, they break down slower. You know, So I go to work in the morning with my tinted sunscreen on my face. And in the summer, if I'm going to go out at lunch, you know, I may use my brush on sunscreen just as a quick touch up. Because um, who wants to take their makeup off and start fresh? You know, I get asked that question all the time. Um, so when you're indoors, you're definitely breaking down slower, but outdoors, you, you really need to be diligent and reminding yourself to reapply, especially if you're in water. 
Yeah, I put an alarm on my phone when I take my kids to the beach or the pool. So putting that alarm on every like hour and a half as like a reminder, of course, when they get in and out of the water, they're always reapplying. But time flies when you're having fun and you don't realize that you haven't reapplied their sunblock in three hours. So putting an alarm on can really save, save them. Awesome. All right. So many great questions and great answers. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Corey and Jamie for those excellent answers. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope you've enjoyed this event. Please be sure to uh, visit impactmelanoma.org for further information on how to get involved and uh, to see upcoming events. Uh, please go to the website to make donations and support the work that Impact Melanoma is doing across the country. Uh, your support means so much to us and uh, thank you for, for joining and keep blowing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.